And what are you doing, Apple? They always do what's right for the consumer, right? Uh, on the index of lies, that's ranking pretty high. That's pretty high. Welcome to The Extra Dimension, the show where we take deep dives into topics at the heart of the technological convergence. I'm your host, Ian Arbuck, and today I am joined by Ryan Rampersad to talk about USB Type-C, the one connector to rule them all. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED24. So Ryan, hey, we are kind of at a, a crossroads a convergence, if you will. A well, actually, this is more of a divergence, isn't it? it depends on how you think about it. Because we're, I mean, we're entering, we're entering a time where we're having to transition from one type of port to another. Actually, several types of ports into hopefully just one. Right? Hopefully, hopefully, which isn't even attainable, actually. And we'll, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I, I am really hopeful about this possible future, and and. I'm really curious to see if we can identify the problems that might face us as we try to, you know, create a world where we just have one port that we use for basically everything. And, you know, can we solve those problems? Mm -hmm. So, what the heck is all this about? What is USB, first off? It stands for something called the Universal Serial Bus. Yes. What's a bus? Uh, That is a very technical question, actually. So... And I'm not sure if I'm equipped to answer it. It's it's like it's a part of a computer's like physical layout, right? So when they when you when you're on a motherboard, they talk about like the north bus and the south bus, right? And they're like slightly separate parts of the flow of transistors. And I'm getting a little <laughs> far away from the so, answer. Aren't so, I? so a high level generalization of what a bus could be mm-hmm. is in the old days there were there was this idea of if there's something plugged in, the system will wait for that thing to send data mm-hmm. and then it'll react and then wait and then react and then wait and react. So so imagine you were trying to type on your keyboard, mm-hmm. but something else was doing something. So you wouldn't see whatever you were typing until that other thing stopped doing whatever right. it was doing. Then you would see what you just typed in. Right. Unless there was a dedicated bus that went straight like... That had a workflow from the keyboard right. to so the screen. The 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 idea of the the this bus is that it's one of many possible lanes of activity, mm-hmm. and things go in, and the system can choose to react on it or not. It's kind of this asynchronous uh, data stream. Okay, you can kind of think of it like that. The word serial there doesn't really matter. Just pretend that that's an old thing. It's yeah. It's, it's just actually it's not par- parallel. It's actually parallel. It now. is well, right? Because you can have multiple things doing whatever you want. Okay. And it's up to something to be responsible for listening. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So the the big part though that most people are going to care about is the universal part. That mm-hmm. first word, right? It's not a parallel port. Correct. It's not it's- just for printers. It's not a printer port. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, Ryan, do you remember those days? Because because you know USB has been around in most people's lives for about twenty years now. About twenty years. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember a time before USB? Sure do. Okay. Because I kind of don't. I, I've been doing this computer stuff for a long time. The um, time before USB was pretty much before two thousand, mm-hmm. and you know the the Windows ninety five and ninety eight times. Yeah, that's those are bad days. Yeah, yeah. I, that's when you needed your PS2 port right. to plug in your keyboard and your other PS2 port to plug in your mouse. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you had an entirely different port that was big and pink and long and yeah. for your printer. And yeah, complicated. Yeah. So and of course you could only have one of those other things probably per computer. Right. So you could only have one printer or one other peripheral thing. Mm-hmm. Unless you went and got like a fancy e- extra cards card. to yeah. plug into your motherboard. And yep. Yeah. So yeah, so what USB has basically done for us is it's replaced all of those unique ports. And so now almost all of the peripherals that we ever plug into our computers you know, with a few exceptions, but most of them just plug in via USB ports. So now you're just limited by like how many ports you have on your computer. Right. right? And I want to point out which things you still use Mm -hmm. that don't use USB. Yeah. So, so so what would that be? So, well, so 
over the course of the years, like the things that USB took over was basically like limited by whatever the data transfer rate of USB at the time was, right? Sort of. Initially, it was it, USB was pretty slow. I think it was limited to like 12 megabits per second. Very slow. And and so like, you know, initially it was very simple things like mouse, keyboard, you right. know, that just had like, okay, this key is being pressed right now. That doesn't take a whole lot of bandwidth, no. right? As they improved and, you know, we got into USB 2.0, then it started to replace things like, you know, floppy disks, you know, stuff that had data transfer rates that weren't that fast and now we you know we're in a world where usb is so fast that you can like just run hard drives off of it you can pretty much run anything off of it in some circumstances right yeah but so in general right now the common things you won't be plugging into a usb port of any type will probably be something like a monitor yep or you know, some external hard drives mm-hmm. um you know, there, there, there are big things like that. You right. just won't be able to do really anything. like specific professional grade, high bandwidth devices. You know, right? Stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. And and I'm actually really like curious about why monitors never really adopted USB as a port for um, for transferring because like you until know until recently there just wasn't enough bandwidth just like you said which seems crazy because like my screen hasn't you know i i've had like a 1080p maybe you know 1366 by 768 panel on most of the screens that i've been using for mm-hmm. a long time that's not that much bandwidth to take to uh, a 1080p panel is probably going to be quite a bit of bandwidth really. okay. yeah oh well <laughs> more more than usb2 could handle mm-hmm. well Probably. And and one of the other reasons also is um, at some point in time, motherboards, you know, the thing where all of the, the parts of the computer that go into it, a lot of motherboards came with separate USB chips as a controller. Okay. And then at mm. some point it switched and the USB controllers were integrated into the chip, the, the CPU instead. Right. And putting additional chips on the motherboard cost more. Right. So that... For normal people, that would have had to be passed on to the consumer. Um, and for enthusiasts, they didn't care either way. Right. So so usually they just put it just enough. Okay. Right? And so it just wasn't, it just didn't make sense. And then when it did switch over into the CPU, you could get maybe five effective CPU or CPU dedicated USB ports. Right. But then if you wanted to have a motherboard with more, it still would have needed the other extra chips. mm so there still might not be enough bandwidth to go around forever. Right. Yeah. It's a little bit different now. Because CPUs can just handle more? Or... Yeah. Okay. And I think there's the, the, the protocols have changed a little bit, so mm. you can just do more with less overhead. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. So let's talk about some of the reasons that like USB succeeded when other formats did not. Because yeah. obviously like there there have been a lot of different kinds of ports, different systems that have come and gone. But like I said, USB has been around for like 20 years and we're yep. still using it. So number one, I think this is probably the biggest one, is that it, it's not proprietary. That's right? right. It's it's a standard that is defined and anybody can make a USB device mm-hmm. without having to pay like royalties. That's without, right. Yeah. So that's a huge, huge factor. It is a very important thing that the port you use does not cost any additional money to the manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise they wouldn't put it there. <laughs> right. So I, I don't know about HDMI, but I think there's still a license of some sort hmm. uh, or royalty kind of thing for putting an HDMI port on something. Right. You know, it's a dollar. But it still impacts somebody somewhere. Is that why so many computers are like, it would make sense for them to have an HDMI port, but then they just have like a bunch of display ports instead? You know, that could be it. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Also, on the cost factor, not only like the royalties, but also like USB tended to be kind of the lowest common denominator mm-hmm. level in terms of like the the technical specifications. Mm-hmm. And so so it was way more widely adopted than other like standards that were technically better, you know, had higher bandwidth or could provide more power or had features like, um, you know, daisy chaining or something like that. I'm thinking of Firewire here for sure. But, it, you know, so it was just it was just cheaper to make USB than it was to make like Firewire components. Right. And so so from the computer angle, that's definitely true. And even from the device angle, that's mm-hmm. extremely true. It was much easier to make 
for example, in an old style, in the old days, digital camera. You know, one sure. of those old things. Like an old point-and-shoot camera. They took great pictures back in 2005, they, they, I'm they sure. Sh- they sure did. Um, <laughs> they were in black and white, though. Um, maybe not. But back in those times, it was much cheaper to put in a controller in that for a very simple USB interface to transfer mm-hmm. a file that rather than to have to do the much more um, complicated FireWire example. Right. Now, some things did use FireWire back then for fast transfers, so Mm -hmm. like a video camera. Mm -hmm. But they still often did have USB support somewhere. Right. Yeah, because if you're implementing something more expensive, you might as well also implement the thing that is less expensive as well. Right. Yeah. And then the final big reason is that USB throughout most of its history here through versions 1, 2, and 3, it had just the same physical connector. And all of them were backwards compatible. I can take my brand new like USB 3 thumb drive, plug it into an ancient computer, and it'll still work. It's just that whichever one of the devices is like the slower one, that determines what our total speed is, right? So that, that's the bottleneck. Yeah. Uh, I'll add one more that I think is also important. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about drivers. So- okay. A lot of other devices back in the old days. So, so think about uh, the time of Windows XP. Sure. So there was a version of, Win- of Windows that did not ship with USB two drivers. Hmm. So in order to use a USB two device, you had to get drivers for that specific device. Okay. And not just use the general ones. Hmm. Because at some point they didn't treat that data transfer as just data transfer, and let the 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 program figure out what to do with it. Uh, at some point they just made a driver for it and became universal and you could just do that. Okay. But before then you couldn't. So when, when Vista came out, Windows Vista, and mm-hmm. this was a long time ago, back in like 2006, there was no native USB 3 support either. Um, I think Windows 7 started to bring that in and they actually got modern drivers for all the things and they got it in one place through Windows Update. And you just plug it in mm-hmm. and it just became a, either a generic driver if it was possible or a specialized one from that vendor. Drivers really drove USB adoption heavily because it was much easier to target USB if there was already a driver on the market right. that was universal rather than having to write some crazy thing for FireWire. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. So even though even though the driver situation was lagging a little bit in terms of like still universal support. Okay. Fascinating. Yeah. So drivers are really big and. Um, I think it's it's sort of overlooked now because how often are you actually plugging like a digital camera into your computer? Mm-hmm. If you're taking pictures off a camera, it's probably through your SD card. Right. So there's some differences there. Of course, that SD card reader is probably plugging in there, into your computer with drivers now. So who right. cares now? But back in the day, it was it was important for that camera to be able to interop. Mm-hmm. So. And actually, uh, I I can tell you for sure with the SD card reader that I put into my desktop, uh, that is just plugged into a USB 2.0 spot on the motherboard. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about like you know SD cards that are built into laptops, mm-hmm. you know. But well, actually, that's a that's a good thing to bring up too. So there are some some computers, so like the ports they serve externally. So you might have an SD card reader in your laptop. Mm-hmm internally it might be wired up through a usb2 controller okay so it it's basically an internal external thing (laughs) that's so complicated it is kind of cool though all right so now this brings us kind of to the present day and we're living in this world where all of like our full-size devices so our desktops and like most of our laptops right they've had this rectangular USB port. This four-dimensional port. Right, the one that you can plug in one way, it doesn't work. You plug it in another way, it doesn't work. And then you plug it in the first way again, and it works. Yep. Yeah. Impossible, right? It's 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 like found all over the place, right? You go out uh, to go to buy like a power strip, you know, to have like five uh, outlets mm-hmm. uh, in one see, spot. And you'll see a USB 2 shaped port. Yep. They're, they're, it's well, um, installed right there on the, on the power strip. When my dad was renovating his house, he actually decided to, I think it was silly, install a bunch of these new outlets. Oh boy. With the USB 2 oh rectangle boy. shape built in. And it's like, you know, they're going to come out any day now. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So so we've got basically all of this infrastructure built up where USB is just like there are, there everywhere. are cars, there are radio dock things. Mm-hmm. I still see mm-hmm. them at Target all the time. There are who, every, everything. Every has airport. These yep. Uh, every airport. <laughs> 
And and of course, like we we do have s- some different shaped versions of USB. Mm-hmm. Um, USB Type A is the one that you see all over the place. USB Type B is like this kind of weird kind of square ish, but uh, it's got like round rounded. Where do you see that? I've I uh, see it like on printers. Yeah, printers. I don't. So I don't. I what I've always wondered is what is the justification for that particular shape? I don't know why it exists because it's better than the rectangle because at least you can tell <laughs> by looking at the receptacle and the connector uh-huh. which way it's supposed to be oriented. Okay, and unlike HDMI, it's not usually pointed up mm-hmm. like on a TV. Okay, which is very hard to plug in because mm-hmm. it's again a rectangle almost it's actually a square so you can figure it out better right but that shape just doesn't make sense it's yeah it's a little weird um and then we get into they made some smaller versions the of minis USB. and micros yeah my minis and micros for so things one's like tra- cameras one's a trapezoid and then one is like an elongated thinner trapezoid yeah um, except that the first trapezoid has like these weird like rounded cutouts of the sides yeah so if that wasn't bad enough, then there's even worse things like there's customized endings, customized connectors Uh-oh. for some devices. Really? So I've had many digital cameras that have type A on one side for the computer uh-huh. and some insane custom one okay. for the other side for the camera's part. Usually it does cons- conserve space, but okay. also probably to make you buy a $10 cable. So does it, but it actually implements USB. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, over there's nothing it. special with huh. it. Okay. I'm wondering now whether like you know you you buy a, a ds or whatever and it's got that weird looking proprietary nintendo crap That's a good point and it's i mean the only cable that i've ever seen for that is a power cable mm-hmm. so that could just be a, a power uh transfer right and doesn't have any data built into it at all but i suspect that you can plug in like doesn't it doesn't DS's it have into have... ds's or something doesn't like it that. can't you do that isn't that a thing Is i don't that know how you play pokemon well but know. they also i mean they can make wireless ad hoc networks so maybe they didn't build any data transfer into mm, the physical port. no they must have i don't know yeah it's i we're way way into speculation <laughs> there but yeah so so we've got a few different shapes for usb connectors and usb type c is at its most basic, just another shape. So, so what what do you think until even now? What do you think the most prevalent shapes are? So it's got to be A mm-hmm. on the computer side mm-hmm. and micro USB mm-hmm. on everything else side. Yep, sort of. Um, and well, yeah, and it's and it's like micro and mini depending on what era you are from, mm-hmm. right? Nowadays, micro USB is all over the place because that's what like every smartphone that isn't Apple uses and. Even even cameras, right. yeah, use micro USB. Uh, if you find like an older device still lying around, it probably you're gonna, would be mini. You're gonna have to hunt down a mini yeah. cable. Yeah, yeah. So what 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 were some of the problems with micro USB, for example? Well, I think that those little the springs that hold it in place mm-hmm. died out uh, fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a lot of like mini USB cables just kind of like become. Like the head of them becomes a little bit bent mm-hmm. out of shape, you know, and then it can't really charge very well. Yep. So as a connector, uh, it suffered the same problem. It, it was too rectangular, and it also had a single side orientation. Okay. And so anything that is rectangular, which has two sides you could put it in on, but only a single side of proper orientation, suffers the same fate. If it had been more... Wait, are you saying that people couldn't figure out which way micro USB was supposed to go too in? Too true. Are you for real? Yeah, yep. I've, that is the easiest thing in the world for me. In the dark and in with people's inability to actually pay attention, <laughs> it is very difficult for I just, some people. Okay. I guess I am the kind of person who would like memorize which way my phone has oh, it oriented. I did you know, too. And I can I, feel it with I, my thumb I, in the dark. I always felt the top, the, the two little spring tips mm-hmm. to know like, okay, so is it going to go in this way or do I need to reverse it because my phone right. is the other way right, right now? Right. I could do it unconsciously it's fine i get it normal people can't do that right so something to be aware of about that so what what fixed all of this in usb type c yeah so okay so usb type c does a couple of things that makes it like the clear goal here is to replace everything else right one it's small enough to actually fit on like phones and other small devices right but it's still big enough to have enough like data throughput and power throughput to use it as a proper fully featured USB and power transfer device Mm -hmm. for like laptops for, you know, desktop, like transferring data and stuff. And it's reversible. So you can put it in either way. 
it's reversible. Yes. Now that it's changes not, everything. It's not round. <laughs> you can't just like stick it in anyway and rotate it around. But there's there's it's it's still kind of you know it's got a wide side, but you can stick either wide side into the wide so it's, side. So it's got the best parts of a rectangle mm-hmm. without the worst parts of being a single sided connector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About time. Good. Excellent. Hmm. Now I do find it rather interesting that the other reversible port that is widely used lightning has the like the leads are in the center on the cord on the male side right but the leads are in the center on the female side in usb type c i'm curious to see if that's going to affect like how long the ports last kind of thing you know does is 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 there going to be you know like wiggling around cords is that going to break the the yep. you know leads on the inside of the phone or something yeah. i don't know so i've heard a lot of you know you get criticism on both sides so with the with the iphone style lightning connector mm-hmm. uh, what happens is dust will get inside mm. and then one of the two sides will be obscured okay and then you just blow it out and it's fine again but on the other side uh, on the on the Type C side, when yeah. some dust gets stuck in between the the the, the leads and the top, it's mm-hmm. a little bit harder to blow the dust out because it's tighter. Right. I've heard about um, you know what are we trying to protect? Are we trying to protect the phones? You know, connection point? Or are we trying to protect the cable? So if the cable's supposed to be the expendable thing, then it I, makes sense to have the iPhone style. Right. I would definitely prefer the cable to be the expendable thing. Yeah. So it just depends. And I, I think it would appear that it would be more brittle to have this pillar in the middle of the thing the thing goes around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that could just break off at any time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but hopefully, I mean, hopefully they build the housing, you know, snug enough that it can't really move around. And hopefully they build the pillar in such a way that it has enough n- enough flexibility that it just uh, can't break off. Uh huh. Yeah. Eh. I don't know if those two things are actually part of the specification. Or I not. doubt it. <laughs> All right. They had two choices. They picked one. Yep. It's fine. Yep. And, yep. And we have to live with it now. For now. Because because we're actually uh, like a few years late to the to the party of talking about like this brand new thing USB Type C. I don't even know if we're late it's, to be honest. Well, okay, so this this design was finalized in August of 2014. Right. This is the first year, 2017, that the most prevalently selling Android device has it. Okay. So I think we're True. just on time. Yeah, and this is also the first year that like apple's pro line of laptops second year right tentatively because it didn't third year really didn't the new one pro line yeah pro line yes like the 2016 late pros had them okay okay but yes yeah so so yeah so this design was finalized in august of 2014 and we started to see devices popping up in kind of early 2015 that were using it the first laptops that i became aware of were the chromebook pixel 2 mm-hmm. and uh and then the macbook retina I, what which what are we calling that line the macbook the macbook yes <laughs> the really small thin one that replaces the macbook air but doesn't really and the the, the the really thin one that it costs the same if not less than the new iphone uh yeah uh, yeah they, they both so so here's here's my like criteria for a, a laptop being like a usb type laptop it has to use usb type c as the charging port Mm-hmm. Right. I have, you know, a big honking Lenovo uh, laptop that the robotics team got at my school that does have some USB type C ports on it, but it has its own charging, you know, proprietary Lenovo charging port. So, eh. but yeah, there there are quite a few laptops out there nowadays that actually utilize USB type C to its fullest. A lot of Chromebooks. Uh, my brother just got the Samsung Chromebook Plus. Right, and mm-hmm. that's got two uh, USB Type C ports on one on either side for charging, and we also it's it's really taken off on phones, sort of. Well, on yeah. high end phones. Yeah, that's true. I I have not so for example taken I, a look at like the two hundred dollar phone line. So uh, I purchased earlier this year a Moto G five for my mom or okay. G five plus rather, so the bigger one. Okay. Uh, it had type uh, micro USB still. Right. And I don't even think the G5S Plus has it either. 
So, what's the G5S plus? It's the bigger one with the S on it. What does an S mean? Better, you know, it's just like Apple. S means more, right? I guess. I guess. Maybe. That's why there's an S at the end of guess. <laughs> but yeah, we like. I think 2015, mid 2015, was when we really started seeing phones popping up that, that people those, cared about. Those are the first entry. So yeah. I think that was the first year with the uh, from Google. You were getting the uh, the two variants of the yep. Nexus, Nexus phones. Nexus 5X and 6P. Um, um, I think the OnePlus 2 came out earlier that summer. And then the, the, the Pixel, of course, had it. To be honest, there weren't that many phones until this year. Mm. Um, this year, the S8 line was Samsung's first phone with Type C. Right. I wonder if the Note 7 had it before it exploded. I don't know. You'll have to go and Google take a it. look through the smoldering wreckages. Yeah. Of... So this year, pretty much every Android phone has Type-C that's flagship quality, right. yep. at least. I think one of the reasons that it's still lagging behind on lower-end phones is because of the added cost, mm-hmm. which is a shame. Mm. Like, And of course, it's going to be like that because the lower-end phones are going to pay an extra $0.35 cents when they can get a super discount like here please buy right the modules for the old ones do you think it also has to do with the fact that they are like predicting that the customers who are going to be buying the lower end phones are going to be the ones who would complain the most about having to buy a new set of cables and stuff to go with their new phone uh, to be honest i have not met a company in the last oh i don't know ever who's ever cared about a customer actually <laughs> um oh fair enough maybe i i really doubt that any dem- demographics actually matter to any co- uh, businesses like mm. that. I think it's all about costs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so we're, you and I are living in kind of this funny world now where we have some of our devices are on USB type C. Some of them are not. Yeah. Um, it's going to, we're probably going to be in that, in that limbo for a little while. So I'll tell you some really sad stories okay. about that. So for example, I recently purchased, gosh, it's terrible to say I recently purchased some horribly good, Expensive, but really good headphones. Mm-hmm. Uh, noise canceling. They are still micro USB. Hmm. They came out with new models. So you, you get your hopes up. Like, yay, new new models with new technology. You Bluetooth 5 and Type-C and all sorts of good stuff. Nope. Still mm. micro USB. So when what does it take for peripheral to graduate to this next step? So, for example, next to us sits our wonderful analog mixer. Right. Our audio mixer. Mm-hmm. Well, this thing doesn't even have USB, but you could go out on the market and buy something with an integrated USB 2 right. uh, digital interface. There are no d- USB 3 interfaces at all hmm. inside of a mixer. And there are for sure z- negative one <laughs> USB type C models. Right. Yeah. So what's going on with the industry? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. When you, when you start to get into those specialty markets and then what's weird about that is those are the markets where they would be okay charging a premium right what if it's an extra hundred dollars but i get type c out of it mm-hmm. i'll do it higher bandwidth integrated power what's not to love yeah yeah and then of course you know people have to either get new microphones that take usb type c or they have to just get like the cords to adapt from well everybody knows that type c to, to if you're, mini if usb anybody everybody knows that microphones with quality will always be analog on the interface side uh, yeah but that's that's not a big deal like it's a small small exchange mm-hmm. let's talk about some of the cool kind of technical things that USB type C does that I think are going to give it a lot of clout that that's Go going to it. going to help it uh, succeed. So number one thing is since it is powerful enough and small enough to power like all devices that you could imagine. Ideally we're approaching a world where like I could leave home with just one cable, one charger and I could plug it into any of the devices that I brought with me, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that is a huge selling point uh for for like really jumping into this whole usb type c thing another cool thing is if you have two phones that both have usb type c and you plug them into each other you have a lot of options right because when you think about it like if you plug in a mouse and keyboard to your phone the phone is clearly like the host device right right? and then the the keyboard and mouse is the peripherals but when you plug in your phone to a computer the computer is the host and the phone is the peripheral, right? What if you plug a phone so, into a phone? Exactly. In that case, 
who's the host and who's the peripheral? Well, the phones kind of make that decision just at random when you first plug them into each other. But but you can change that. You can tell uh, which one should be like consider should should be doing what um, all the way from like data transfer to power distribution. Right? You could have one phone power the other phone uh, if you wanted to, which is the funniest concept in the world to me. Like. I guess it might be useful if I'm out there with my Nexus 5X, which has pretty bad battery life these days, and you brought your Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which has fantastic battery life. And, sure does. And uh, and then I just you know plug in and I sap some of your lovely, lovely battery power. Go for it. <laughs> um, and data hosting and power hosting are actually independent over the cable. They mm-hmm. use different pins, um, which is really important because then you can have like these kind of hubs uh, as peripherals that can do things like um, allowing you to be plugged into, say, a projector so that you can, you know, put put, you know, images from your phone up onto a screen. But you can also charge your phone at the same time by plugging the hub into a wall, you know, Um Laptops that have multiple USB type C ports can charge using any of those ports, uh, which is great because like, you know, sometimes you want to be on the left hand side. Sometimes you want to be on the right hand side. (laughs) Right. right? And I actually had this thought while I was typing this up. What happens if I have two cords, two charging cords, and I plug them both into both sides? Will it charge faster? Will it choose one of them? I don't know. I don't know. Will it explode? Let's find out. Uh, Don't use a Samsung device. Right. Because it will explode. mm, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's unfortunate because the only device that I have access to that has two USB mm. Type C ports is a Samsung Chromebook. Um, so, so for for one interesting thing, and we'll talk about this more in a little bit too. There's a lot of complications with the implementation of USB Type C right. inside internally, like abstracted from most people's view. Mm-hmm. So, probably very likely, whatever device that has two Type C ports. One of them is probably the primary port. Yeah. And it, it is the only one that is physically wired inside of the computer to even handle power. So how does the other one ever charge the device? It gets baseline power, but not enhanced power delivery. Hmm. So that could be a concern. So, for example, on one of the, the on the new MacBook Pros, which do have Type-C ports, but they're not USB necessarily only. Well, yeah. Reasons. Uh, only on the 13 inch models, you can only charge on one port, even though there's two of them. Really? Yeah. That's weird. Right. And there's just reasons. Hmm. Alrighty. So, yeah. So, I, I'm going to dive into what you were cryptically referencing uh, a moment ago cryptography, which is alternate mode. So, this is both the most important thing, I think for USB type C to really be successful and be widely adopted, but it's also going to be the biggest stumbling block for consumers. So alternate mode, it means that some of the pins in the USB type C like connector can be used by the manufacturers of the cables and devices that use USB type C for other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. To, to run not only the protocols of USB type C, but they can run their own protocols. So that basically means that like the software that is communicating between the device and the peripheral doesn't have to use the same systems, the same software systems, right? As uh, what USB like has defined. So this means that like USB type C can be one physical port that can be used for a whole host of different circumstances but it also means that we're going to have a bunch of devices and cables that physically look the same from the outside, right? But they might be incompatible in terms of their functionality. Right. Which is a nightmare mm-hmm. to try to to explain to people who are just trying to use their devices, right? They just want to plug a thing in and they just want it to work. So, yeah, it it starts it starts with like the fact that not all USB Type-C cables are even fully featured USB 3.1. Like, that's crazy. Even worse is that there, there are many phones that will come out, especially the, as as lower-end phones start coming out with Type-C, mm-hmm. the ports won't even be USB 3.1. Right. They'll be USB 2 still. Yeah. Because it's cheaper. And, yeah, and some cables can carry, like, different levels of, of amperage. Right. And, and we've we've 
seen some some warnings from like Google after soon after they put out the Nexus 5X and the Nexus 6P. They were like, hey, be careful when you're buying a cable that goes from USB Type C to Type A mm-hmm. because if you get one that isn't hooked up properly, that doesn't report to the phone that it can only carry a certain amperage then the phone is going to try to draw more power than the brick can actually handle and you might damage your um the the brick that you're trying to charge off of right some usb type c cords will implement display port which is a a protocol for like uh transferring images onto a screen right Mm -hmm. same with hdmi everybody knows what an hdmi cable is hopefully thunderbolt now thunderbolt is a really interesting example because Thunderbolt kind of has illustrated the problem that I'm talking about in the past. So if you think about, I'm sure that you have seen uh, a user who has like a MacBook, right? I sure have. And this MacBook was made sometime, you know, between like 2011 to 2014, maybe, right? And it's got a couple of ports on there where it's it's a very small, kind of almost rectangular, but like it's got rounded edges on it. A square version of... USB B. Right. Yeah. yeah. And much smaller. Yeah. And and you know, the users of these MacBooks have always had to plug in an adapter to plug in their their laptops to like a projector, right? Uh to put that up on the screen. And those adapters that they're using plug in to the display port port on the yeah. The, Dis- it's an unfortunate name. Display port port. Yeah, on, on their MacBook. But If they bought this adapter straight from Apple, what it's actually doing is it's using the protocol called Thunderbolt. Mm. And Thunderbolt, I think a lot of people think of it as an Apple exclusive, but it's actually made by Intel. Yes, which was previously codenamed Lightpeak. Yes. Which is my favorite codename ever. (laughs) And... You can uh, obviously use Thunderbolt for a lot of different things other than like plugging in a monitor, right? Um, Right. You you can have Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapters. And if you take one of those adapters, which is shaped like DisplayPort, mini DisplayPort, but it uses Thunderbolt as its protocol, if you take that and you plug it into another computer Mm -hmm. that has mini DisplayPort on it, but does not implement Thunderbolt over that port then your adapter is not going to work, even though it physically plugs in. Yep. And I discovered this, actually, when the robotics team got this brand new Lenovo giant honking laptop. I love it to death. It's got every port that I could ever want, right? Including including two USB Type-C ports on the back that do implement Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. But the DisplayPort port that it has does not implement Thunderbolt. So I can't use no. I can't use the stinking adapter that to plug it into a projector, even though DisplayPort is literally for plugging things into projectors, right? Yep. yep. It's insane. Well, so if that wasn't bad enough, you know, all those the the new MacBook Pros have these very misleading ports. They look like Type C ports, but they're actually Thunderbolt ports. Right. But they do implement USB as well. They do, but the modes will be toggled. So if Mm -hmm. you plug in a Mm. USB Type-C hub, for example, you don't get Thunderbolt on the other side. Uh Aha. Unless the hub is a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Unless the hub is a Thunderbolt hub. So if the hub is a Thunderbolt hub, can I plug in regular USB devices that use the USB protocol? Yeah. Okay, good. Right. Yep. Still get that. So... It's it's confusing. Like so, is is this shape now representative of what it can do? No, not at all. No, Mm-mm. it's very bad. Man, it's like yeah. There's there's a lot of different alternate modes, and the and the number that are supported is just going to increase, right? You know, because yep. right now we've got um, all of those you know monitor type you know image ports that we talked about. We've got Thunderbolt. We have PCIe, which is really cool. I think a, a big problem is. There's so much old technology here mm-hmm. on so many different fronts. It doesn't matter that we have Type C now. It, it's almost sort of just too late for now. Mm. <laughs> it's wait. <laughs> you got it. Your conception of time confuses me, Ryan. Me too. So so what what are some other problems with it too? Well, like I said earlier, the USB Type A is just everywhere, right? And so in the meantime, we're going to have a lot of things that not only like 
adapt USB type C to like monitors, you know, and to mm-hmm. HDMI and whatnot. But we're also going to need a bunch of cords to plug USB type C into USB type A. Because like, I don't know about you, but I don't have a corded mouse that has a USB type C at the end yet. Nope. So I, I have a very expensive mouse here and it's still a uh, USB micro, micro USB. USB. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yeah, even I mean, and that is a, a wireless mouse, right? Yep. And so the dongle that you have to plug into your computer is, a, to, is USB type A, of course. Yep. 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 So, you know, like, you know, it's kind of at this weird crossroads. Like, at what point do we just stop charging the mouse that way? Mm-hmm. And then we do we just all assume we have computers with Bluetooth or something. So th- this also goes into like the whole thing about getting rid of the headphone jack, right? Right. Is uh, our, our alternatives to using the headphone jack are either you have a lightning or a USB type C connector at the end of your of your headphone cables. And then adapt for the other one, of course. Or you use Bluetooth. And the problem there is not all of my devices have Bluetooth. Speaking of that problem, uh, let's talk about the iPhone. Okay. Oh, God. Tell me more about this iPhone you speak of. This, oh my gosh, I was flabbergasted <laughs> uh, last year, actually almost exactly a year ago when they announced the iPhone Every 7. Fall. Apple had the perfect opportunity to really jump into the USB Type-C bandwagon. Everybody, like... Everybody is referring to Apple as like the champion of USB Type C because they put it on all of their laptops, right? On all yes. of the new MacBook Pros. Oh yes, all the ports are gone except the Type C shape with right. Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. Except on some of them that aren't Thunderbolt, which is very confusing. It's very confusing. Yep. So what Apple really had the opportunity to do here was when they did the iPhone Seven. What was the major thing? that everybody got kind of up in arms about. I have no idea. That they were changing. What did they change from 6S to 7? No clue. Ryan? It was so many years ago. Just think about it for a moment. It was one year ago. The color. Nope. Oh. Goodness gracious. What do you mean it was one year ago? The headphone jack. Oh, is that what it was? They got rid of the headphone jack. I don't listen to music, so I didn't even notice. So they had the opportunity there to go straight from having lightning and headphone jack as their two ports on the iPhone to just having USB Type-C. And that would have prevented this whole universe now that we've got where people have headphones, wired headphones, that only works on one device that they own. And they can't share it with their friends because so, their friends have a different ecosystem of phones. So and who does that hurt? Mm, mm, the consumers, of Which, course. What company cares about? None. So Apple will tell you that they always do what's right for the consumer, right? Uh, on the index of lies, that's ranking pretty high. That's pretty high, yeah. So I would say that's a great example of how to pretend to like a customer, but provide a great excuse mm-hmm. for lock-in. Mm-hmm. So that that particular user that bought their $500 Beats headphones with the lightning adapter at the end included, yeah. they can't leave Unless they want to also lose their headphones. Right, right. So they won't. Yeah. Apple wins. <laughs> and, and like, now we're in a world where if you are, like, a straight-up, like, Google fan, mm-hmm. right? You, you've got the latest Android. You have the, the Chromebook Pixel 2, you know? God bless your soul for <laughs> using that device. But you're living in this, like, utopia where you can charge all of your devices off of one cable you can plug them into each other you can you know you can use this the same adapters on all of your devices right Mm -hmm. if you're a straight apple fan you don't get that you have you have to use usb type c with your laptop you have to use lightning with your with your phone and i think you can't even plug in your phone to your laptop with the cables that are provided with your phone that right? is true because you have usb type a on one end of the cable and what are you doing apple so so you know maybe there's some inconsistency there Maybe. Uh, yeah. But how often... You're giving... You're shipping headphones with this phone that can't be plugged into the laptop that you're also shipping. But maybe Apple doesn't consider the phone and the laptop something you use together regularly. How often do normal people plug their iPhone into their, you know, computer? I would imagine, you know, if you're trying to charge your phone and that's just a convenient thing that's right next to you, plug it into your laptop. Well, yeah. your laptop's Before. already plugged into the wall, so exactly. just plug your phone into the wall. 
the fo- the wall's too far away. You know, Lap- laptop charging cords reach for everybody than lives by a wall. Lightning. What? Everybody lives by a wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, it's just it it. Ah, uh, I can't even fathom what they were thinking with this strategy. I I understand where it came from. I get it. It's it, I'm pretty much okay with it. I'm not. I know. I'm not. I know. Ugh, I <laughs> yeah, because because now my goal here uh since we're since we're living in this transitional period, my strategy for surviving this transitional period is anytime that I am buying a new device, it's got to do USB type C. Right. Right? Um because we're like moving forward not looking back here, no. right? If if I if I move backwards in any way, I'm just gonna regret it in the future. I've got to do my future self, uh, you know, some some favors. <laughs> Which is why I'm super super glad that like Nintendo of all companies, Nintendo who has always just done proprietary uh, connectors for everything, adopted USB Type C for the Nintendo Switch. Which is very interesting, and mm-hmm. I was sort of pretty much shocked. And by the way, we've we have a uh, review of the Nintendo Switch that is coming out the day after this episode comes out. And and the the Switch, of course, doesn't quite do full USB because no. like it is a console, and they don't want it to do certain things, but it does other things. It really so, makes you wonder why they put it on there. Um, there's no reason they couldn't have just dug in their bin of stuff and uh, found a cheap. Circular power cord, nine volt adapter, three amp deal. Awful, yeah. There's no reason they couldn't. They, yeah, I think it might have been pretty cheap for them to actually implement DisplayPort over USB Type C. I think instead mm. of making their own port for that, that's a good point. Because I did read on the Wikipedia article that is it really DisplayPort, that, not an HDMI. That is that is what I read. That huh. it, that it uses the like the USB provided protocol for going from from usb type c to display port that's pretty suspicious yeah also it could have something to do well no no i can't um, i don't know reasons and so so like one thing that i tested out was uh i just bought this brand new flash drive that has usb type a on one end and that's usb type c cool. on the other end yeah so i'm literally living with like one foot in each era right here we plugged that into the it's nintendo to switch to see <laughs> and it didn't even acknowledge that there was a device plugged in yeah so it's fine um when i plugged it into my phone though my phone was just like hey this is this is a storage thing let's like you want to move some files around it's cool <laughs> You're right let's do that because android you know of course just like gives you access to the uh to the file system and yeah yeah that would be an interesting thing if if apple implemented usb type c on the iphone they won't would they give they you access no. to like moving files no. around from your why, phone why would to, they want your, you to, do that? to a thumb drive. No, I don't know. Can't do that. Does iOS even have a downloads folder? I have no idea. Call call hmm. Brian. Hmm. Ring 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 ring. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so here's my other strategy for this transitional period: is I'm going to go with the lowest common denominator, right? And I know that all of my enthusiast friends are going to be like, no, 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 no. If you've got Thunderbolt on your laptop, get the Thunderbolt accessories so that they could go fast and, you know, transfer everything like super speeds. And I'm like, but then I have to buy a different like cable for my phone to do the same job as the laptop. Right. And I don't want to do that. I want to have a consistent experience across all of my devices. That is what I like value the most in my digital life is, is having all of the systems that I use available on all of my devices. Right. Yep, And that sounds good in theory. However, there's a lot that type C doesn't do very well. Like what? So if you wanted to chain any devices together, right. very difficult. I have never, so since that's never been a possibility for me, I have trouble thinking of like a situation where I would want to do that. Sure. Um, and also if you ever wanted to drive multiple monitors off of one cable with power, mm-hmm. Type-C also can't do that. It's Yeah, that'd be a little bit complicated. Also impossible. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm totally okay with only being able to drive one monitor off of my phone, though. I am okay with nothing. Be- because... <laughs> I demand more. That's quite a bit more than I so, could do before. I, I think what will... Uh, let's talk about the future. Mm-hmm. So we're on 3.1 right now. Right. Gen 2. Yep. 
because that makes more sense, right? I wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, an eventual merge between USB and Thunderbolt. Okay. Where it just is the same thing. Quick question. Hi. Since Thunderbolt is made by Intel, right? Yep. Can you only use it if you have an Intel chipset in your device? Nope. So I could have a Qualcomm device that implements Thunderbolt. Sure, you can have an AMD device that implements Thunderbolt. Oh, okay. That's a lot better than I thought. Yeah, that's no problem. Good, good, good. Um, it's an open spec. Okay. Light peak. It's cool. Good, good. They recently did something to to um, make it easier for integrators to integrate Thunderbolt mm-hmm. into things, but I don't know exactly what that is anymore. Okay. I think I think USB four effectively is Thunderbolt. Like that is clearly the future. Mm. It's higher bandwidth. Mm-hmm. It's the same shape now. We're just one price crate price lowering away now in in the thunderbolt 3 like specification sure do they actually say like usb type c is the shape that you should use or does that just happen to be what apple chose to do not only apple dell did it too right yes and i yeah and i understand that uh, like everybody copied them everybody yeah yeah but so so i could have thunderbolt stuff that uses some other crazy it's possible but that's their fault okay yeah cool Mm -hmm. (laughs) what a weird world world i don't know man (laughs) So there are some other weird things too. So what what happens in the future when for some reason somebody named Apple decides that oh well lightning isn't small enough anymore we need to go smaller. <laughs> uh, so Well no. So what's going to happen really is that since the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 implement wireless charging oh, yeah. like the physical port existing on the iPhone that the, those days are l- numbered now. So Yes, numbered 8 and 10. <laughs> So sometime, sometime in the, like, I don't know how far into the future, but sometime in the future, they're just going to get rid of all physical ports. And yeah. if you ever want to get files off of your, like, iPhone, you're going to use AirDrop or whatever. Which is what everybody does now. Except that I have no devices that I can AirDrop to. Well, we're just poor. Yeah. Um, if you want any, like, specific suggestions for, like, USB Type-C peripherals that you can get to go along with your new brand new USB Type-C devices uh, marquez brownlee has a, a whole video showing like different categories of things from batteries to you know ssds to you know whatever um so go ahead and watch that if you uh want to see those but like i said you gotta you gotta like be mindful of what protocols the peripherals that you're getting use and what protocols your devices actually support Mm -hmm. so it's you're gonna have to start doing your research um which sucks but i guess that's the world we live in now it's not that bad it yeah yeah but i mean like i would i would just love to be able to like walk up to somebody and be like hey can i borrow your adapter to like you know do my presentation or whatever and it's like oh wait you bought a thunderbolt one and my phone doesn't support that and you know i don't know why i'm trying to do my presentation off my phone but you know it it's could ha- it could happen, you know. Yeah. These phones are pretty good now. Yeah. Um, I think I think we're we're um. This is a first good year mm-hmm. because Android has their biggest selling phone ever. Yeah. Bo- both both lines, Note and regular Galaxy phones. Now, did Samsung do the same thing down the line? You know, for their cheaper phones, or uh, are those still on micro? I think those are still probably micro. Okay. Um, okay. I'm fine with that for now. But but this is the first year where there's a huge proliferation of it. Mm-hmm. Um, when when there's new devices like when normal laptops like five hundred dollar range laptops get Type C as their charging port, cool. When monitors finally get Type C as their preferred <laughs> interface, <laughs> yeah, super cool. I don't think that's going to happen in five years. Well, no, five years maybe. In the next year or two, that's probably not going to happen. We're probably going to still be stuck with DisplayPort mm-hmm. or HDMI mm-hmm. or oh DVI and like. Especially on televisions, that's going to move slow. We're go- we're going to have know, HDMI for a long time, I think. Yeah, and, and it's 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 weird because I kind of almost would like a dumb port. Like HDMI is sort of a dumb port. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it doesn't it exchanges data, but in the sense it's visual stuff. Right. It, it, USB is raw data. Just mm-hmm. some, both and, sides and have power. To, both you're right. Both sides have to figure out what to do. Yeah. All right, so that's about all we have on USB Type-C, both the past, present, and the possible future. (laughs) 
Ryan, where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Marr, and of course on my website, ryanrampersad.com. And I am Ian Arbuck. If you want to inter- interface with me <laughs> on the internet, you can <laughs> find me uh, on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face while I'm talking to you because that joke was too good. It was. Uh, And uh, we are The Nexus. Uh, If you want to get in touch with the network in general, please send us an email at thenexustv at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at thenexustv. Um, This is uh, The Extra Dimension where we take all sorts of different topics that have to do with technology and how it intersects with other parts of our lives. So if you have a suggestion for a topic for us, if you want to come on as a guest to talk about something, you know, uh, drop us a line. And um, and yeah, go check out some of our other shows as well on the Nexus TV, the Nexus.tv. That's our website. That's where we are. <laughs> have a good one. Have a good one. <laughs>